In today's video, I'll answer your question, what does it mean that Jesus is the Son of Man? Then afterwards, as always, I'll share some helpful resources, so stick around until the end. Jesus is referred to as the Son of Man 82 times in the New Testament. In fact, Son of Man is the primary title Jesus used when referring to himself. The only use of Son of Man in a clear reference to Jesus spoken by someone other than Jesus came from the lips of Stephen as he was being martyred. Son of Man is a title of humanity. Other titles for Christ, such as Son of God, are overt in their focus on his deity. Son of Man, in contrast, focuses on the humanity of Christ. God called the prophet Ezekiel, Son of Man, 93 times. In this way, God was simply calling Ezekiel a human being. Son of Man is simply a paraphrastic term for human. Jesus Christ was truly a human being. He came in the flesh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 2. Son of Man is a title of humility. The second person of the Trinity, eternal in nature, left heaven's glory and took on human flesh, becoming the Son of Man, born in a manger and despised and rejected by mankind, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3. The Son of Man had no place to lay his head. Luke chapter 9, verse 58. The Son of Man ate and drank with sinners. The Son of Man suffered at the hands of men. This intentional lowering of his status from King of Heaven to Son of Man is the epitome of humility. Son of Man is a title of deity. Ezekiel may have been a Son of Man, but Jesus is the Son of Man. As such, Jesus is the supreme example of all that God intended mankind to be, the embodiment of truth and grace. In him, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. For this reason, the Son of Man was able to forgive sins. The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The Son of Man came to save lives, rise from the dead, and execute judgment. At his trial before the high priest, Jesus said, I say to all of you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Matthew chapter 26, verse 64. This statement immediately ended the trial as the court accused the Lord of blasphemy and condemned him to death. Son of Man is a fulfillment of prophecy. Jesus' claim before the high priest to be the Son of Man was a reference to the prophecy of Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 through 14. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. Daniel saw glory, worship, and an everlasting kingdom given to the Messiah, here called the Son of Man. And Jesus applied this prophecy to himself. Jesus also spoke of his coming kingdom on other occasions. The author of Hebrews used a reference to the Son of Man in the Psalms to teach that Jesus, the true Son of Man, will be the ruler of all things, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 5 through 9. The Son of Man, in fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy, will be the King. Jesus was fully God, but he was also fully human. As the Son of God and the Son of Man, he is deserving of both titles. Want to learn more? Subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Visit gotquestions.org for more great content and check the details section below this video. There you will find one book I recommend along with several links to related questions. If you'd like to learn about Bible Munch or if you're interested in bite-sized devotionals, subscribe to Bible Munch on YouTube. It's linked right here. Now remember, got questions? The Bible has answers. We'll help you find them.